Hey everybody, Pastor Ryan the Roving Giant here. I got my buddy Al with me. We're going to be meeting up with uh, Todd and with Bill, other guys that you've seen on previous videos. And uh, we are hiking some Finger Lakes Trail down here by Ellicottville, Holiday Valley area through the McCarthy Hill and Rock City State Forest. We're doing one night. Uh, and Mojo's with us. Say hi, Mojo. <laughs> Alright, well, uh, we'll j keep you along on the hike and let you see anything interesting that we see. <laughs> we've been making our way up through the trail. It's been a lot of tall grass, but we've been going through the woods working our way up the hill here and we just crossed the first road I'm not sure what the road is because I never actually well I didn't think of where we were hiking in time to order the official map but I got screenshots of the map from the website on my phone to work off of but I don't know what road it is we just crossed but now we're making our way uphill and into the woods <laughs> so Al and I were hiking along here and came across these pretty little pansies and he was telling me that these are edible so you you can just pluck off the the petals and hmm. tasty yeah a little fuzzy but they're they're easy to eat. Hmm. Enjoy a pansy next time you're out. <laughs> Al and Mojo and I were heading up the hill and we come across a, a big party tent. Cause we're like, huh, why is there a giant party tent in the trail? Um, that was part of the trail, absolutely, but it, we also took a moment to pause and realized that we were going the wrong way. <laughs> we were, uh, we were heading east when we should have been heading west right from the start, so uh, we're doubling back and <laughs> we'll let you know when we get back to the real trail that we're supposed to be on. <laughs> <laughs> well, we have uh, made it back to our original starting point here and uh, we're going to take a quick water break and check in with the guys who are making their way down to meet us and uh, we'll get back on the trail and we'll keep you involved. Finally made it back to the regular path and came across this neat cabin, but we also are trying to keep our trails. I, we're, I see a little flag here on the tree. I don't know if this is a trail marker or not, but we're gonna keep putzing our way through to see if we can find all the, ah, I think I see another marker here. So if you come this way, know that these trails are, the marking is a little bit rough. So we'll head to the right around this corner and see where the trail leads us. <laughs> so we found our marker right next to the cabin. So if you're coming through this way, you gotta go just to the left of the cabin on your way in. And uh, you will find the very overgrown trail there. It opens up to a really pretty field here. Mojo and I have been working our way down this road uh, for a bit and we are ready to turn off. So here's where you turn off. If you see it, there's some signs on the side here and it's nice and overgrown because this does not seem to be like a heavily used trail. I wish I knew how to better show you how steep a section was, but this part that Al and I are working on doesn't look so bad on the video, but whew. This has been pretty pretty brutal. It's fun though. Mojo's smoking us, so 
<laughs> making it look like it's a breeze. To the bottom of the hill and came out to a beautiful view of the valley here and uh, next stop is we're gonna cross the road and head switch back pretty much straight up that hill right there so uh, I'll show you how steep it is maybe the camera will show that one instead of the other one. so we're making our way down the road in between the vehicle noise I thought I'd just show you as we head to this corner up here, it's gonna be that hill that we are gonna switch back up, that steep hill. So, once that truck's coming. We'll see you over there. If you're hiking along and wondering where the trail is, kinda as the road's doing a big curve here, and if you look down, there's a uh, big plastic tank and the trail comes right down this way through the weeds. So stay with us, I'll try to keep it. It'll get quieter soon, I promise. <laughs> this has been every bit as steep as we expected, plus that spring blowdown storm has left stuff laying all over the trail. So this is some tough trekking. Poor Mojo's having a tough time getting over some of the trees. He's not the only one. We're trying to work our way over this stuff without breaking an ankle or knee or whatever. But slowly but surely, we're making our way through. It's fun. This is what makes it an adventure. If there weren't some obstacles to get over in the way, it wouldn't be a, as great of a feat. way through but I am grateful for a few things. I'm grateful for my hiking poles. I'm grateful for long sleeves and long pants for shoes that fit <laughs> because this is branches and thorns and steep and loose stone. Everything that's asking you to fall and hurt yourself. So we're going nice and slow. Hooray. We made it to the top. Now we're bleh, flies. <laughs> uh, we are making our way along the ridge here. Once we're done on this ridge, we will be uh, taking a, a right on the trail to head further, or I think west, yeah. Please. Nope. Yep. I don't know. It's a right. Uh, and that'll bring us over by our first, or our, I should say our next big landmark, which is going to be just a bivy area, bivy tent area. So I'll let you see it when we get there. beautiful field here, this grassy field, and uh, making it back into the woods. Probably well, been able to see our destination off in the distance, so I'll see if it'll focus, but if you see right there, where my poles are pointing, that's Holiday Valley Ski Resort. 
where we are camping on top. So I often get to a point when I'm on these longer hikes, after I've done a, a relatively grueling stretch, I, uh, my legs start to get fatigued, but I start to get into a zone and I will step away from whoever I'm hiking with sometimes and just cruise a little bit, let my brain shut off. And I actually, that's part of what I enjoy about hiking is just letting my brain shut off and just my body is doing all the work and I'm not thinking about it, I'm just doing it. So. When I'm done with this video, I'm going into brain mode. I'm not brain mode, going into a uh, mind shut off mode. <laughs> As you can see, it's working its way off already. So we just came down a really steep section, but uh, we made good time. My knees are aching like crazy. That's what you get for being the roving giant. Us giants have knee problems. That's just the way it is. So we've uh, made it to the next access point, which I believe is access point seven. And uh, once we cross here, I'm guessing we've got probably about two and a half to three miles to go before we hit access point six, um, where I believe Todd may meet us. If he does not, he'll meet us up at the top of the hill at access point five, and uh, we'll keep you all posted as we go. So we're at this house here, but we're trying to find the trail. All we see is a posted, uh, posted sign here, but way up on the hill up there, we see a tree with a blaze on it. The blazes came from the side of that barn right there and pointed us in this direction. I can't seem to find any other places to figure out how to get up there without trespassing. So I'll let you know if we figure it out. <laughs> so we decided to cross the little creek at the end of the uh, property. And as we made it up this way, there was this little bush here. It's got a white blaze on it. So it seems to be sending us in the right direction. Beautiful clearing here. It's like a alpine summit clearing. It's really pretty. I like it. I'm gonna keep hiking though because it is about 5:30 and we haven't made it to the base of Holiday Valley yet. Uh, Al and Mojo are behind me. These hills have been killing us. Um, but we're just gonna keep trucking, make it into camp. I have extra motivation because. I have steak for dinner, so I need enough time to get my fire started. I'm feeling rain start to come down, so it's concerning me that I won't be able to cook my steak, but I'm going to figure out a way, dang it. So, yeah, that's what I'm thinking about right now. Pretty soon. So a little rule of thumb I've decided to live by while hiking is that when hiking with a partner, Never hike far enough that you can no longer see them. And if you do get to the point where you can't see the person behind you, then stop and wait until they're within sight. Never go farther than that. Just, it's a safety thing. So I hope you guys try it out. I think it's a good system. Um, I stepped a little far out of view from Al, so I'm just standing waiting because uh, I want to make sure he's good, make sure he's safe. The rain has begun, but I shall endure it for the sake of my steak. So we've been trucking along a bunch because it's raining, we wanna to get to camp, and um, Al's a hurting. Um, but I came across something I just wanna show you. Cool little uh, um, hunting building. Uh, Al and Mojo are behind me a little ways. 
been stopping periodically to make sure they're still with me. They're still doing good back there. Um, and I've texted ahead. We haven't made it to the base of the mountain to access point six yet, but uh, we're close. We're on the downhill there. We're probably about a half hour, 40 minutes behind schedule. Um, slow moving. The rain makes everything slippery. Um, but we're seeing if we can't get a, a ride to the top of the mountain for camp. Uh, just to simplify that and not kill ourselves. Just make it as far as we have to to be able to get picked up. Um, we'll keep you posted as that stuff happens. Hey, sometimes the trips don't go exactly as planned. We happen to do three miles extra we didn't intend to do at the beginning of the trail so that threw us off a bit and that was probably three miles more than we were capable of doing because from about here to the top of the mountain it is about three miles so uh seems like the trip was planned well we just missed our start no big deal we we're able to have fun anyway the rain is refreshing and uh yeah we'll keep you posted as things happen just made it to a pretty clearing and uh thought i'd show you but top of that is where we are camping so we got to get up there <sighs> i know i've been saying al's heard i'm not in much better shape so uh well tally ho so we uh made it down to uh access point six there's todd's car down there and uh they are coming to rescue us bill and todd are coming down the hill and they're gonna bring us to the, the finish of the hike. So this is the end of hiking for the day. So uh, we're just gonna take a little breath here while we wait and we'll see you at camp. Shivering. I'm gonna take home. Okay. I'm Al. Nice to meet you, Al. Actually, I'm glad you take my home because when I saw him, I said, he needs to go home. <laughs> he needs you to go home. You did a good job, Mojo. You did a great job, He needs guy. to go home. <laughs> I know, I'd be worried if he stayed. I'd be like, oh. Hey everybody, so uh, we are hiking our way into from the top of the mountain down to the lean-to. Um, we dropped Al and Mojo off. Mojo decided he was done. And Al respected that and brought Mojo home. But I got Todd and Bill with me. And uh, we made our way to the top of the mountain. And now we're just looking for our lean-to campsite and uh, I'm pretty much out of daylight so um, I'll show you a little bit of video at camp but it'll probably be dark um, but yeah we'll see you when we get there so we're here at camp we got a, a nice little lean-to that's used probably during the winter for skiers and snowboarders but right now it's got a nice picnic table in there Todd set up he's just gonna sleep on his blanket Got a little fire going at the stand-up grill. Bill's back there setting up his nice big 12-footer tarp, and I got my stuff set up over here, and it was worth the hike. I'm gonna be able to enjoy my food thoroughly. I've got a uh, baked potato getting started, a nice sweet potato, and I'm gonna, gonna throw my steak on in just a little bit once the uh, fire dies down. Hey everybody, so um, it was a nice night, we uh, got all our gear set up and had a nice meal and uh, got to just hang out and chat a bit and now we are heading to bed and I'll say goodnight to you guys. Uh, it's been a good day so far and we'll pick up with you tomorrow morning. morning everybody uh, it's about 6 30 ish and we are up and we are at them and uh, Todd's I think Todd's already eaten breakfast I'm about to get mine fired up Bill's back here I don't think Bill has uh... yeah it looks like Bill's Bill's moving but he's not all the way out yet and uh, from that big long doozy to hike I was putting numbers together I think that Al and Mojo and I did probably 13 or 14 miles between about 11.45 and 7 p.m. So that, that was a doozy of a day. And it was hilly 
you saw that. It was a hilly 13 miles. Um, yeah, just gonna about to get breakfast fired up and uh, see how see what this day brings us. Todd and I have the, uh, and Bill as well, are all packed up. Yeah, we're packed up. We're about ready to hit the trail, and we're going to go drop off our bags and our gear at Bill's car and uh, hit the trail light for the afternoon. So, uh, it should be fun. We have downsized uh, here on at, at Bill's car, and I got a dramatically lighter pack now. Got a little Skeeter Skeeter Preventer thing on the back of my pack, and we are about ready to hit the trail. This is going to be a nice hike. It hasn't rained much yet. There's a little bit of drizzle in the air, but just keeps it cool and nice. Hopefully, the Skeeters won't be too bad, and be able to enjoy a nice lightweight. Eight and a half or so miles. So uh, come along with us. We're listening for a wood thrush. to a little road clearing. We're going to keep going down the path and it's been nice. McCarty Hill has been good. Lots of really cute little salamanders or newts. We haven't decided if they're salamanders or newts. Bill suggested newt. Salamanders will pop in my head. I have no idea what they are, but they're adorable. So we showed them to you on video. bottom of the hill and uh, made it over to CCC Camp Seneca which is one of the options that we had while camping but I'm glad we didn't take it because it looks like we got some company up there there's a nice pavilion seems like a great spot for some car camping though if anybody wants to go car camping this seems like a nice relatively secluded spot to do so and then the rains came <laughs> This is a cool little section of hike that we're on here, so I'm just gonna show you guys behind me. Got mountains in the back and over there. And we're working our way up this steep hill here, but it's fun. The rain just makes it interesting. Doing one last video before we go back into the woods here, but this has been a cool little section. I think Bill has the most promising theory as to why this is all cleared out. We're thinking it's because Camp Seneca was here, and they no longer are, but they left the area bare, and it's all growing in nicely. And hey, I think we found a trail register. We're getting closer to Rock City State Forest. We're going by some really cool rock formations, just big rocks that 
likely left here by glacial runoff or whatever made it all happen. It's really pretty neat. Some big old rocks. City State Forest. It's uh, these, just these giant moss covered boulders but uh, the salamanders have been out here as well just as they have been along the whole trail. It's been fun sh shooting the little cute little salamanders um, but uh, yeah I'm just uh, waiting on Bill and, Bill and Todd and their excellent adventure and uh, we'll uh, keep hiking but yeah we're firmly in out of McCarthy Hill and um, or McCarty Hill, I'm not sure if it's McCarthy or McCarty, but uh, we're out of that state forest and we are firmly in Rock City State Forest. Um, probably about a third of the way through Rock City. Um, the rest of the two thirds out, it's about 11 o'clock, so we're making decent time and we will be uh, continuing on our way. Looks like we are hanging out amongst giants. <laughs> not just me, I'm talking about the rocks. <laughs> you guys gotta check this out. This is really cool. It's just they suddenly appear out of nowhere. Like there hasn't well we did see a few plow, larger rocks, you know, a mile back, but yeah. You just want a couple on the side, you know, nothing and all of a sudden boom. <laughs> this is massive. My, my question is are these a part of what's underground or are these just on top of the ground they were deposited here? Like like if glaciers were pulling these up off the mountainsides when they came through Pennsylvania and then dropped them here. Yeah. I don't know. I mean just I just wonder. Because they retreated north if they just dropped these huge pieces of mountain here that were scraped off the hills of uh out into a uh, random little like just mystic holes like yeah cool. I, 
I gotta say that when uh, filming this and walking through this section of the Finger Lakes Trail, this uh, takes the cake as my favorite section so far. <laughs> it's just super cool. It just keeps going. It, I, every shot that I've shown you guys has been a different area. So, it just, new formations, different sections, it's, it's really cool. We're on the home stretch. I just got back here and nice little uh, mowed path. And uh, we're just gonna make our way through this path all the way out to a dirt road. And then from that dirt road, it's one mile out to the car. So uh, I'm probably just gonna say goodbye to you guys here. It's been real, it's been a great trip. Had fun, those rocks were cool. And uh, it's cool hanging out with everybody. And, uh, See you next time. Stay curious.